Hello and welcome to a new series where we create a small blogging blazer. In this video, we're going to create our application in Visual Studio. Now, if you wish to follow along at home, you can do. There is a link on the screen with all the codes and the database. But before all that, I just need to tell you some of the stuff that you'll need installed and some of the experience you'll need for this. You'll need SQL Server 2017 or above. Visual Studio Professional 16.4.3 or above, so you might need to update that. You also need .NET Core 3.1.3. Now you might be able to use a higher version of .NET Core, but it might be slightly different in the way things work. And also ideally, you need to have built a .NET Core application before, because we're gonna be looking at some of the uh, configurations and we're gonna be setting up our own configurations inside it. So now we're going to create our Blazor application in Visual Studio. Let's create a new project. Let's select Blazor app. Let's give it a name. Let's call it roundthecode.blazor and press create. Now we've got two options here. We've got Blazor server or Blazor web assembly. Now you might find that Blazor web assembly doesn't appear for you. You need to download additional project templates for it to appear in Visual Studio, but it doesn't matter in this instance because we're going to select Blazor Server app. Let's do that and press create. This is now going to create our Blazor demo application. So let's have a look at our program class. Now, if you're familiar with ASP.NET Core, you should be familiar with the program class. What this does is it builds up a website and runs it in a console application. Inside that, it uses the startup class for configuration. So let's have a look at our startup class. We've got, it adds Razor pages. Blazor uses Razor components. We've also got server-side Blazor. We've also got this singleton here, and this is used in one of the demos, which I'm gonna to show to you later in the video. Inside our configure method, let's have a look at the stuff that's relevant to us. So we've got this endpoints, it uses endpoints, it maps it to the Blazor hub and has a full back to page of underscore host. Let's have a look at this underscore host. So this is our layout. So we've got our head and our body. Inside the body, it bootstraps it to an app Razor component. Inside the app Razor component, we've got this router component and it uses the endpoint to route it to a particular Razor component. If it finds it, it goes through this found component. If it doesn't find it, it goes through the not found component. And both instances uses this main layout razor component. So inside our main layout razor component, we've got this sidebar, which will appear on the left hand side when I show you the demo in a sec. Of, it's also got a nav menu inside of there. The nav menu is a razor component separate. And underneath there, we've got an about us link and this app body, which will basically render the content depending on which endpoint we are using. It will render it to the right Razor component. So let's have a look at the nav menu. So you can see here, we've got a title up here and we've got this on-click toggle nav menu. So this on-click is an event attribute which renders to the tog toggle nav menu. Down here, we can have a look to see what's happening here. What it does is it reverses the property of collapse nav menu. So if it's true, it sets it to false and vice versa. That is a property set up here. And this collapse nav menu is used in the nav menu CSS class. So if it's set to true, the class will be set to collapse. Otherwise it won't show anything. And that is shown up here. And what, this is basically used in the mobile view. When you've got the drop down menu, when you click on it, the menu appears. And when you click on it again, it disappears. Underneath that, the menus we've got, the navigation is we've got the home, the counter, and the fetch data. These are some of the demos that they use in our Blazor component. Now let's run the application. So here we go, here's our application for Blazor. We've loaded it up. We've got our home page here of Hello World, welcome to your app. But before we do that, let's go to the menu and show you what I was talking about with the uh, nav menu. So you click on it, it goes up and then it disappears. 
So that's basically what's happening in the nav menu. Let's have a look at our individual pages, our individual razor components. So this is our index razor component. Goes to the home page, says hello world, welcome to your new app. As you can see, that's exactly what it's displaying. Let's go on to our next demo, the counter. Let's click on the button a few times. As you can see, the count is going up by one each time. Let's have a look at the code for that. So yep, you can see it goes to forward slash counter, got the title. Down here, we've got a property of current count. The default is set to zero. And we've got this increment count method. Now what this does is that it increments the current count by one every time the method is called. Now that method is called in our button, in our on click event attribute. Every time it's clicked, it increments it by one. As you can see, that's exactly what's happening there. Now our final demo uses the weather forecast service. And if we go into the page, we can see we inject that service into our Blazor component. And further down, we've got this forecast, which is a class of weather forecast. We can have a look at that now. So this is basically a class, stores the date, temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit, and a summary as well. The weather forecast service, it has a string array of summaries. So whether it's chilly, cool, or mild. And then we've got this get forecast async method. This passes in today's date and then gets the weather forecast for the next five days. So it will basically create an instance of weather forecast for each day. It stores the date, the temperature in Celsius and the summary. This is just random. It doesn't rely on any real data. It's just completely random. So that's there. So when we go back up here, when the raising component is called, if it hasn't been loaded yet, it shows a loading, otherwise it will show the actual data. As you can see here, today's Friday the 1st of May, so it will show the weather for the next five days. But that's now, we don't want that data for our blog, so we're going to get rid of all the test data. So let's get rid of data. Let's also get rid of counter and fetch data. We don't need that anymore. And in nav menu, we're going to get rid of those links that were in there. We use our own. Now that's not going to work because we just need to get rid of the weather forecast service instance. And we also need to get rid of round the code.blazor.data. So we deleted the data folder. Let's rerun that again and see if it works. We should have an empty application. And there we go. We've got an empty application. Now we can go ahead and build our blog. And in our next video, we're going to be integrating Entity Framework into our Blazor application. Now for more articles, visit roundthecode.com. Visit my YouTube channel and subscribe at roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube. And follow me on Twitter. It's at roundthecode. And I will see you on the next video.